Hey, this is Sandy Rask, and I think I'm live. Let's just give it a second. I'm going to let it rotate, and I'll tell you that uh, I've got a whole new angle, as you can see. Oh, fantastic. I'm live. So this is Sandy Rask. This is the Food 2.5 Kitchen, and this is our new setup over the stove top so that uh, you can see this. I think I may have confused some of our titling today um, and put out there that it was going to be, hey, Carlette, that it was going to be eggplant. Um, it's actually going to be dressing, so um, so we're still on our Thanksgiving, um, you know, venture. Hey, John Clark, how are you tonight? So nice to see you. Um, we're on, ah, uh, fantastic, oh, thank you, I'm gorgeous and red. Wow, <laughs> such a great way to start the evening. Thank you so much. Sarah, so good to see you. Oh my gosh, I am loving uh, my new kitchen assistant. Um, this is um, this is Rosie who's holding it, holding up my uh, my camera and giving me all sorts of new cool angles. So you guys will have to leave me messages and let me know what you think of this. Um, I think it's kind of cool on a day where we're going to do everything on the stove top that uh, that you can see it pretty effectively. Um, and the name, if I haven't said it, um, and I don't know if she's on yet, but Shannon actually came up with the name for me. She's phenomenal at naming things. I could tell that when she named her tattoo, she named her new stomach. Um, I thought, you know what, I went to her when I um, when I got my new kitchen assistant and she said, of course it's Rosie. So, um, so here we are. So tonight, the Food 2.5 Kitchen, which you know is twice the flavor, half the calories, is going to do dressing. Um, and this to me is the biggest lift of everything in Thanksgiving because Right now, um, when you look at the average dressing, um, well, let's first say dressing is outside the turkey, stuffing is inside the turkey. So I'm going to keep calling it dressing because everything I'm going to do is outside the turkey. But you can take either of these two recipes, put it into your bird, and use it as stuffing. So you have um, you have the option. But our dressings tonight, and let me turn up the heat and get this going so that we can get uh, get done. Our dressings tonight, what I wanted to do was get the, um, the caloric um, value down and I wanted to get the carbs down because it's basically a savory bread pudding when you think about what's in it. It's bread, it's a few, you know, fruits and vegetables. It might be has some nuts or maybe has some sausage for different flavors, but then it has liquid and eggs um, and you bake it. That's a bread pudding. So the, the biggest, and this is, when you look at a, um, a serving size of, um, of, of traditional dressing, it's about 400 calories per cup, and it's about 50 grams of carbs. So if you do nothing else, like if you eat your traditional Thanksgiving dinner, but you lighten the load on the, on the dressing, you're going to be so much happier um, the next day. Or your other option is to make it the way you want it, because it's a tradition for you and for your family. But eat small portions. Um, I would recommend a quarter cup size um, if you're going to make it the traditional way. All right, so what we've done, we're going to make two versions. One is um, we're going to take down the calories by um, reducing the amount of bread and upping the amount of um, produce and vegetables. And I call this my 50-50 rule, and I do this with every starch, not just um, dressing. Um, if I'm going to have rice, if I'm going to have quinoa, if I'm going to have pasta, which doesn't happen very often, if I'm going to have bread, then I need to have more than 50% in fresh produce for every ounce of, of starch that I'm going to put into it. It just kind of keeps me in check. So when I'm calculating a, a half cup serving, it's really a quarter cup serving of the starch, and then the rest is all produce. So that's what I'm going to do. And then... Um, again, a shout out to Shannon. Let me just see if she's on yet. Hey, Pammy, so nice to see you. Hi, Christina. Hi, Darlene. Hi, Ying. Hi, Lisa. So great to see all of you. So, um, so what I, in case you guys didn't hear that, I'm gonna do a, um, I'm gonna do a dressing that has a lot less carbs in it, but it's gonna have traditional flavors. And then I'm gonna do one that's really, um, really, really interesting. And it uses cauliflower as the base. It has no bread in it at all. Hey, Le Lena, how nice to see you. Uh, so, but when you look at the actual recipes, you start with a little bit of fat. I've got two pans going, and you're going to see they're going to be roughly the same as we go through. We're just going to do different flavorings. I've got um, a couple tablespoons of butter and a tablespoon of olive oil. And what the olive oil will do for us, you can see, I, I had to start this before you got on. Um, it's already gone a little bit brown, but that butter would burn if you don't put a little oil in it. So I use, um, I like to use Irish butter if I'm going to do it. 
I put a little more butter into the traditional version because we have bread that's going to need need a little bit of um, a little bit of butter. Okay, so butter and oil, they're both hot. Then the next layer of flavoring is um, is carriers, and it's the same with this as with most of the dishes I start. So I'm going to start with the Trinity, which is um, onions, carrots, and celery. Okay, and that's the same in both. So let me just get let me get that in. All right, so we're going to put that in there and get that going, and then we'll season it, and I'll talk about the seasoning. So you can see, I guess if this angle's pretty good. Yeah, leave me notes on what you think about this angle. All right, there's, there's pan number one, and I'm making small batches. One, because I think I think most people are going to be doing small batches in, um, in their life um, this holiday season, but also because I have to eat this. Um, so I don't want to be eating, uh, eating eating dressing for the next two weeks. All right, same thing again. Onions, carrots, celery. Okay. So the bigger difference of the the, um, the bread dressing is going to go, end up going into the oven. The one with cauliflower in place of the bread is going to completely be made on the stove top. So in a second, once these are rolling, we can talk about strategies of why you might want one or the other. All right. So let's get this all coated. All right, so that's going to cook. The, um, this pan here, this traditional one, I'm going to add, the flavorings I'm going to add to this one are apples, cranberries, and orange, which I just think is really interesting. And again, it kind of goes with that theme to me of I can do one dish but have multiple flavors in it. So I want to have dressing done but maybe not have to make cranberry sauce. Because again, I think I was telling you guys the other night, I'm the only one in my family that likes cranberry sauce. So if I can put cranberries into the dressing, bam, that's that's one less dish for me. So I'm not going to put cranberries in yet because they're a little bit um, they're a little bit soft. They don't need much cooking. But I am going to put in. I I cut up um, two Honeycrisp apples, and this is the apples are going to replace about half the bread that um, that I would have put into this dressing. They're ample enough. Okay, let's get let's get the temperature up just a little bit. They're ample enough to um, to hold up in place of in place of bread. All right, so we're gonna get that going. We're getting this going. Sorry, I turned down the heat because I didn't want that butter to burn before you guys got on. Then, because this is onions, what we want to do is bloom our spices. So how do we know what spices to put into this? Well, to me, I like to go traditional at Thanksgiving. I'll go, I'll experiment on a dish, but I'll go traditional on the spices. Hey, Shelly, so nice to see you. Yes, we're going to get to seasonings. Oh, Christina, hi, nice to see you as well. Um, so the traditional seasonings, um, just as Simon and Garfunkel would say, I'm going to age myself by saying that, right? Um, parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. Those are your four. They're usually in the, in the poultry seasoning. That's what I put on my turkey. That's what I put into dressing. That's kind of a common theme through the through the dishes, is some combination. So when you look at these spices, I've got dried, dried sage, dried thyme, dried rosemary. Um, the only one I didn't do dry is I'm going to do fresh parsley. So when you look at spices, and let me get some spices into here, and then we'll talk we'll talk more about spices. So we're doing about a teaspoon each. Maybe a little bit more, but I tried to half this recipe, so I'm just going to eyeball it. There's the sage. Already it smells like Thanksgiving in the house. And then a little bit of rosemary. I'm not a huge rosemary person, so I can go kind of light on the rosemary. And then the parsley we're going to put in once we're done cooking. That doesn't need to go in. That doesn't need to be bloomed. So let's just get that in. And then I'm going to put some salt and pepper in here. Because this is where we want the bulk of the, uh, the seasoning to be done. Okay, there's salt. There's salt. Okay. Equal amounts of pepper. Beautiful. Okay, so while those are cooking, let's talk spices. So when you look at spicing something, spices kind of fall into one of three categories. They, um... Oh, thank you, Marta. I'm so glad you like the um, the camera angle. Shane, so nice to see you as well. Let's connect this week, Shane. I'd love to chat with you. 
Christina, thank you so much. Oh, I love hearing from all you guys. Oh, God, what a great feel. I think I'm, I'm feeling the stress of the day already just kind of disappearing between having you guys in my life and having um, Thanksgiving, you know, since I've got my, kind of my Thanksgiving potpourri going right now. But back to spices. So there are spices that um, fall into a category of leaves, like parsley and basil and cilantro. There are um, spices that are roots, like garlic and ginger. And then there are spices that are kind of woody, like the, the sage, the thyme, oregano, um, and, and that category. So you want, to, um, you want to pick the vehicle that matches the type of spice, like the leafy ones. I almost always use fresh like this, and I'll cut it up. Um, if it's if parsley, basil, or cilantro, I go fresh. It's not worth buying dried versions of these, my opinion, because they don't retain enough of their flavor. So I always buy fresh on this. I've tried the freeze-dried. I don't know if you guys have ever tried these, uh, but they have some freeze-dried ones in the, in the produce section at the, section at the grocery store. They're not bad, but still, of those three, I always go fresh. On ginger and garlic, they um, they dry okay, but they really change their flavor. So I'm not a big fan of dried ginger or dried garlic. So I would use it in either fresh, or I would get the tubes like I always show you guys. You know, so into a um, you know into a form that's easy to use, um, or um, I would buy it frozen. I've I've actually bought frozen garlic and and frozen. Um, frozen ginger quite a few times and it's and it's actually not a bad product. All the rest of them are good dried and they dry to actually a more concentrated flavor and I think my theory is because things like um, sage and thyme have more and rosemary have more oil in them so that oil dries and is beautiful as a dried spice. Let's see, can you replace cilantro with something else? It tastes so, oh Angie I'm so sorry you fall into that category. Um, yeah, Angie, I would substitute parsley most of the time for that, um, but it sort of depends upon the dish. Um, I might also put um, arugula in. It sounds kind of weird, but um, but it has kind of a peppery bite to it. I might also try microgreens. Those are really good, too. Um, you know what's interesting is I buy micro arugula and I buy micro cilantro, and I actually grow it at the house. And my son has that gene where it tastes soapy to him. And he's able to eat a little bit of the microgreen cilantro, um, but can't eat the full the full grown one. So sort of interesting. All right, I can smell these are these are getting close already. So they're starting to get soft. See this one's getting soft. So then the, the next part of this dish is when you think about dressing is is the vehicle. Where's that flavor gonna go? All right. So in this one, this low carb beautiful all vegetarian version it's um, it's going to be I got this um, I got mushrooms that I cut up these are just baby Bellas cut up I use them all the time and I have this beautiful orange cauliflower I had a head of orange cauliflower in the in the fridge and I cut it up all right I think for this dish and I'm not sure about this but I think you could use riced cauliflower in this like a bag of it from the freezer section if you, um, if you thought it, but I'm not 100% on that, so I'm not sure I would make it the first time with it on Thanksgiving. Um, I know for sure it works with this, um, this chunked up. So I'm gonna go ahead and put all of the, uh, the cauliflower. And all of the mushrooms in. And let them start getting happy with all the spices. All right, and you'll see, I'm using a bigger pan in this, because this, like I said, this one's going to be done on, completely on the stove top. We're going to put a little bit of liquid and then some fresh spices into the, into the end of it, and then this one's going to be basically done once it cooks. And I love all these, ah, my breadcrumbs are getting kind of mixed into it, so let me just get the rest of this. Oh my gosh, how beautiful. All right, watch this. We're going we're gonna to turn this, and all of a sudden, this is going to look a lot like dressing, even though it has no bread in it. And I know for some people, you always have traditions in your families, and the last thing you want is an all-vegetarian um, dressing. But if you aren't one of those 
super traditional families and you're willing to go out on a limb just a little bit, um, you should try this. And if not now on Thanksgiving, try it some night with dinner because this is actually, with a roast chicken, this would be so, so beautiful. Um, or you can leave the mushrooms out of this and then take those and roast those mushrooms whole, like big portobellos. Oh, gosh, that would be beautiful. All right, but this is getting all flavored. See how pretty that is? It's got a little bit of the butter. It's got a little bit of the, um, of the olive oil. If you wanted to truly go vegetarian on this one, um, you could leave that butter out. And then in a bit, I'm going to put some, some chicken stock in there. You could put vegetarian stock in there as well. Okay, so we're going to let that cook up just a little bit. And then the only thing left to do with this one is add a little bit of broth and some fresh parsley at the end. So we're going to let that just, just cook a bit. This is, this is almost cooked. You just want it just soft enough. Yeah, this one's, this one's already cooked. This is beautiful. All right, so I'm going to turn, turn the stove off on this one. And we're going to assemble this in a bowl. That's the, um, that's the next step. So, yeah, let's do this. Let's keep that on the heat. Can you see that bowl? Fantastic. Oh my God, I love this. I love this, you guys. Tell me what you think of it. <laughs> All right. And let's do this. I'm going to put this in the bowl. Now, the best bet for this is to let this totally cool. So if I were doing this on Thanksgiving, I would let this, I would let this completely cool. We're not going to have that luxury tonight, so we're going to we're going to have to move this along a little bit. This one, I'm going to put. I've got um, some beautiful chicken broth. I'm going to put about half a cup. And we're going to let that just cook in and cook down to dry. This. You guys can't smell it, but this smells so, so good. I'm going to let it just cook those mushrooms. We're going to turn the heat up just a little bit. And that one, that's going to be a gorgeous dish. All right, then this, all right, so we've got here, let me pull that up so you can see it close, right? So we have those apples, the celery, the onions, the carrots, gorgeous, just absolutely gorgeous. That was cooked in a little bit of butter and a little bit of olive oil. All right, then, then we start layering in. So in this one, the flavor absorbers were the uh, mushrooms and the cauliflower. In this one, it's gonna be the little bit of bread that I'm putting in. Um, so I'm putting in about a third of the bread that I would normally put into a pan of, of dressing. So I'm just doing a simple reduction to, to manage the calories. Okay, and the other thing I did on here, I don't know if you can see that, but I, um, I zested an orange in here already, too. So I've got this beautiful, let's see if I can pick it up. I can smell it. You see that? Yeah, there we go. That's orange zest. So I zested a beautiful blood orange. So when I get to the liquid in here, I'm going to do um, a little bit of chicken broth, but I'm going to do some of the blood orange um, squeezed into this as well. So this one's going to be apple. It's also going to be cranberry. So these are cranberries out of the freezer section that I've thawed. No big deal. Not sweetened because I kind of want that tartness next to the um, next to the, the beautiful um, honey crisp apples. All right. Then I'm going to put about half of this parsley in because half is going to go into that when it's that one when it's done. So we're going to put. Oh gosh, this is going to add a freshness to it that is so just beautiful. Here, let me come back over here so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Yeah, that's hot, so I don't want to go there. All right, then a little chicken broth. And then I'm going to crack two eggs because the eggs are what's going to hold this all the bread together. And roughly what you want is about an egg for half a loaf of bread. Now, this bread that I'm using today, um, it is... Um, it's gluten-free, because I tend to be gluten-free, which is probably why I'm not a big dressing person, right? <laughs> um, but it's also the kind of the cool thing about it. Here, I'm going to hold it up so you can see it. 
see the, there's the crust, and you can kind of see it's, it's pretty dense. And it's been sitting in my fridge for a bit because I only have about a piece of bread a month. You know, it's really, I don't really eat that much. Um, so you kind of want old, dense bread. Um, if you're going to try and do this with a white bread, I would toast it in the oven before you put it in this. Hey, Susie, so nice to see you. Let me see if I've, lost, I've missed anybody else. Hi, Angie, so nice to see you. Hi, Rhonda, so nice to see you. Bonnie, so nice to see you. Oh, my gosh, look at you guys. Oh, I love Carrie Gold, Christina. That is, that is gorgeous. So, anyways, I use stale bread. And you can see in there, like I don't have here. Let me just, um, let me put the egg in and then I'll start. I'll start mixing it so you can see what this looks like. Okay, we're not going to be doing that with the hands this time because it's it's still here. Let's pull this out. Whoa! Look at that. All right, let me watch this. Make sure I don't uh, I don't miss that. That actually looks like it's getting really close. But look at this. Can you see? Like this has here. Let me pull this up so you can see it. This has beautiful bread in it, but it's mostly down towards the bottom. Look at all those vegetables. And look at those beautiful um, cranberries in there. This is going to be so flavorful. And what you guys can't smell is the orange zest against all that thyme um, and sage and rosemary. It's so, so good. So by doing it this way, by reducing the amount of bread, you can reduce the amount of butter that you put into, um, into your dressing. And you take it from 400 calories a serving down to um, 200. Um, then if you coated this one, this one's actually only about 100 calories a serving. So this one really uh, does a nice job taking, the, taking the, the weight out of the calories. Oh, look at that. A little bit more just to cook off some of that liquid. That is so, so beautiful. I love the vegetables here. Just a little bit al dente, so I'm not going to go too far. I just want it just to the, just enough. Let me taste it, see if it needs any more seasoning. Oh my God, look at that. Look at how pretty that is. Mmm, mmm. Not much farther, you guys. Mmm. This could use just a little bit more salt and a little bit more pepper. There we go. Bam. And we're done. All right. And then the last liquid, while that's finishing, the last liquid to go into this is I'm going to squeeze. I'm going to squeeze these, um, these oranges. See these? I've got beautiful blood oranges, and that was blood orange zest from the outside of this, um, outside of these oranges that I that I put in here. So let me just squeeze a little bit of this. Oh, God, you guys! I really and truly wish you could smell this. So blood orange, I chose the blood orange one because they were super fresh and they just looked beautiful. But also because they aren't all, they aren't as sweet as the navel oranges um, or the little mandarins. So I like, um, I like, and this is a, an orange and a half, because I took all the, the zest off an orange and a half, so I wanted to just use that juice instead of, instead of wasting it. And if you didn't have orange juice or you didn't have oranges, that's okay, you can make this without it. But this makes it just yummy. All right, then. So this one, because it has an egg in it, and the egg's going to hold the bread together. This one I'm going to turn off the heat, because that is, that is cooked and beautiful. Um, and this one, what I'm going to do is, I put a little bit of olive oil in here, just so that as this cooks, it doesn't stick to the pan. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be thankful for that later, because we're going to put this in the oven for, for almost an hour. All right. So this... Look at this. You guys see what, oh my gosh. I am upwind of all of these spices. I can smell the sage. I can smell the fresh parsley. I can smell those oranges. Ah, and this. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna cook like a traditional dressing, but it's not gonna stick together quite as much as if you did all bread. But that's okay. That's right, look at that. We have these gorgeous carrots in here too. So this is going to be a slightly sweet savory. 
um, dressing. So tell me what you think of that. Look at that. Look at how pretty that is. Okay, can you believe that? Um, and I'm going to just put that in the oven. So let's get that, and then we have a couple more things to talk about. All right, let me get let me get a little plate. This is cool. I have, I have access to all sorts of cabinets here now that uh, now that I've got the angle different. All right, and let's take a little bit of this, and I'm going to show you what this looks like. This is this is one of those dishes that is on the surface. When you look at the recipe, you go, hey, it doesn't look like much, but look at that. That's like it's got all the Thanksgiving flavors in it. You know what else I would do to this? Okay, here's what I would do. And we're going to talk in just a second about your strategy for Thanksgiving. I would cook my turkey, and then while it's resting, I would cook this, because you saw how fast that came together. Um, I wouldn't cook this till the very end, so it's going to the table hot. And when I put the chicken broth in there, what I would do is I'd spike that chicken broth with a little bit of the drippings from the turkey. So it would have more of a, um, a rich flavor, and it's going to go side by side with those turkey slices just beautifully. So these are, and you can put any vegetables in this you like. I chose, I chose the mushrooms because that traditionally is always on our, our agenda for Thanksgiving. I chose the cauliflower because it holds up beautifully. Um, and starting with the onions and the carrots and the celery is, um, is kind of perfect. Oh, I actually did forget one step. <laughs> um, when you put the onions in, put a couple of cloves of garlic. You'll see that in the um, in the recipe. I clearly forgot about that on my board. <laughs> I thought I had my mise en place all done. Mm, mm. The mushrooms and the cauliflower totally absorb the flavor from the um, from those spices. So let me hold those up again so you can see those. All right. So I use sage. Ooh, let's see. I've got shadows in here. Let's just. I've got sage. I've got thyme, okay, and I like it, you know, not quite pulverized. I don't know why I ended up getting powdered sage. Um, I like it a little less pulverized than that. And then rosemary. And I, um, I, I love that trio, and I love that fresh parsley. So when you're, um, when you're trying to figure out what order to do things in, let's just see if I am missing questions. Love this beautiful. Oh, hi guys. Oh my gosh, this is so much fun having you all on here. I so appreciate you spending your um, your Tuesday evening with me. Hey Penny, how are you? So nice to see you. You haven't missed anything yet. <laughs> and uh, okay, let's see. Oh, broccoli would be really good in that, Angie. That's such a such a great idea. But here's what you what you've got to decide when you're making your Thanksgiving dinner. Um, do you have a single oven? Do you have a double oven? I happen to have a double oven. I'm lucky enough to have a double oven. Let me see if I can move you so you can see. See, you can see I've got a double oven. So what I tend to do is I put the turkey in the bottom, and then in the top, I can put four different dishes if I want to, up to four different dishes. So I can put in there sweet potatoes. Like I can put a, a rack of sweet potatoes to roast. Um, I can put some uh, mashed potatoes in there. I can um, keep things warm. Like I have a lot of flexibility. But I've lived in many homes that only have one oven. So I have to make the decision between what I'm going to do on the stovetop and what I'm going to do in the oven. So I might opt for a dressing like, like this one, like the cauliflower version, just because it's so fast to come together and it can be done completely on the stovetop. So I don't have to burn any, um, any space in my oven while I'm doing that. Um, and it perfectly comes together. If you think about taking your turkey out, it's still got to sit for like, 30 minutes when it's done, you can start putting dishes into the oven, and you can do this one on the stovetop um, and have everything come to the table at the at the same pace. Um, so that's the that is the um, the plan. Let me just make sure I got all of my um, all of my my thoughts down. Um, yeah, so I told you the calories. The standard bread kind of bread and butter kind of dressing is about 400 calories and 50 grams of carbs. A typical woman should have somewhere between 50 and 150 carbs, depending on whether you're trying to do low carb or not. Mashed potatoes comes in second. So this is this is the, surprisingly, I was actually surprised. I thought mashed potatoes were going to come in higher than dressing. But mashed potatoes roughly come in at about 300 calories and 40 grams of, of carbs. So um, so that's the, you know, that's the trade-off. I personally would rather have mashed potatoes than, than dressing, but 
you know, you all can decide now that you've got now, you, now that you've got idea about about the um, calories. Just by taking the amount of bread down, the amount of butter down that, that we use in it, and the number of eggs because you don't need as many, um, we stripped half the calories away, um, and almost half the carbs. Um, so we did a really good job. Although apples, because they're they've got the sugar in them, they kind of tend to, to pop the carbs a little bit back up. But it keeps the calories low. The cauliflower, oh my gosh! I mean, this every serving of this is under 100 calories. Unbelievable. So I wouldn't even hesitate to um, to put a little bit of the um, turkey drippings in it to give it that like oof that um, that you watch in your in your mouth when you when you eat this. All right. So let's see if there's any questions, but. That's it. That's it. What I'll do is what I always do when I have something long to cook. I'm going to let this cook, and then um, I'll come back on when I um, when I taste it. I'll show you the finished product, and I'll put post the recipes up later tonight. All right. Okay. Oh, so nice to see you in here too. All right. Let's see. Bread dressing is. Oh, thank you on the color. I totally appreciate that. Totally agree with the broccoli option. Oh, I'm so glad, Bonnie, that you like that. And Carla, I'm glad you like the camera angle. This is this is actually kind of fun. I feel very much like I'm in a professional kitchen. <laughs> Let's see. All right. I know I'm not seeing any. I don't think I'm missing any other questions. Let's see. I can't see the computer when I'm watching this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got to change your setup being <laughs> or wash dishes at a different time. Let's see. Um... Uh, Oh gosh, yeah, I love blood oranges. I think they um, they really are sexy. I'll go with sexy on, on blood oranges, um, and I just like them because they're not quite as sweet. They um, they have this like really beautiful orange flavor, but they don't kill you with them um, with with sugar. Uh, got twins in the house. Awesome. Thank you, Yang, on the computer setup. I love this. I'll be doing this one again. I do love blood orange drinks too. Let's see. I'm just double checking, and I think I got everyone's question. But please do leave me more questions if um, if I haven't answered them. But tonight is dressing. Traditional dressing is fine. You know the calories. You know the ways to strip down the calories if you want to make it a little bit lighter, or if you want to eat it as is. And I totally get that because of family tradition. Just take out your quarter cup and measure it. Okay, so so that you know how much you're um, you're taking in. But that's it tonight. I am so happy to be with you. It's been so much fun so far celebrating um, pre-Thanksgiving with all of you. And I look forward to continuing to do it. Thursday night is going to be um, Brussels sprouts and I've got a special surprise. Um, I took the, um, the tofu ricotta that I made and I made these beautiful chicken and roasted eggplant roll-ups. So I'm going to make those on Thursday night too. All right? Love to you all. Mwah. Thank you so much for making my dreams come true. Have a great night, and I wish you great Thanksgiving um, dressing. Okay, bye now.